on. All right, guys, welcome back. We're here at Joyce Diner at their first ever truck meet. Hopefully, we'll have many more to come. But we're here with John. Good to see you. Hey, mate, how are you? Fantastic. So you brought your Peterbilt out today as well. Yeah, we brought a couple of Peets down here. Right, and the other one too, right? Yep, yeah, Mad Cow. Mad Cow, yeah. Now, I'm, Nico and I aren't too familiar yep. in the truck well, but your name has come up, and you, I do recognise you from the TV show. It was before Outback Truckers, wasn't it? Yeah, correct. Yeah, we had a TV show, Mega Truckers, and we, Mega just had a, truckers. and we just had a recent TV show, Aussie Truck Rehab, that's just been out. So That's so cool. Yeah. So you were the... You were pretty much the main guy uh, in the Mega Truckers, right? Yeah, yep, I was. Yep. Yeah. How cool was that? Yeah, no, it was a good show, good series. Yeah. Yeah. How did that feel for you? How many years did you do that for now? Uh, we did that for about three years. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy it? That no, was great. It was That's great. Awesome. So this, car, this truck was a part of the show, wasn't it? Or Mad Cow was? Mad Cow was part of Aussie Truck Rehab. Yeah. Um, so that was one of our statement trucks we built along with, with Dan Booby's Peterbilt. Yes. So we, we got to do both those. and. Um, my Peterbilt here was, was part of the show as well, but it's on the next season. Oh, cool. Oh, so yeah. it's by the next season, this one. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about your Peterbilt, this one that we got right here. So in the midst of doing Dan Booby's Peterbilt, you know, I felt like I was missing out, so I went out and bought my own. And I went and searched for a really cool Peterbilt in terms of style and look. Yeah. And my favourite model is a 379. Yeah. And this is a 379X, which is a limited edition. Okay. So it's the last of the 379 series ever made. Okay, right. Yeah, so it's a pretty iconic truck. Very collectible in the States, let alone collectible in Australia. What year model is it? It's a 2007. Oh, it's so still new. Yeah. It's quite, a, quite an old school look for such a new truck. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I thought these were from like the 90s or, or no, early 80s. No, no, but that shape there in the Peterbilt's probably stayed until about oh, 2021. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're the classic Cadillacs of trucking. Yeah. Well, they they definitely look like they are. Yeah. They got the big grills. They got yeah. the pop rivets. Yeah. Like, like it looks badass. You know, look, those trucks. You know, time stands still when yeah. you look at those yeah, trucks. It is. You know, they're they're classic no matter what. So this thing in the trucking world it was in, in really good nick or did you do a lot of restoration to it? Uh, it, it needed a bit of love. Yeah. Um, we painted the chassis, did the interior, put the stripes on it, you know, added our chrome guards yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff and our chrome accents. And so did you do the, the whole paint job or the stripes? Yep, yeah. yeah, we, we painted the whole truck. What's the process of painting something this big? Is it, like, did they have different floors to paint the roof? Like. Yeah, uh, do it does it does it take a lot longer? Like it, it looks like it would take five times the paint as it would of a normal car. It, it's a massive process, yeah. and when you're producing work of a caliber of this to get a finish, um, it takes longer again. So um, what happens is you strip the cab, the sleeper, and the bonnet, and they all come apart and they come off the truck, uh -huh. and then you sand it and paint it. And then you put it back together, mark the stripes out. Gotcha. Then they come they apart come again. and you paint them individually. Gotcha. So it's, it's a massive Fuck, That'd be nerve wracking, wouldn't it? Yeah. Taking them off and then painting them and then hoping yeah. that you got it all measured right. Yeah, when you... yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's definitely a case of, you know, measure twice, cut once. Absolutely. You know? So tell me about the interior. What went into the interior? Um, so the interior was very original. Um, the seats were a little bit ratty. Um, so we had the seats redone um, in a really cool sort of Napa style leather. I put carpet all the way through the cab just oh, yeah. to make it plush and got some custom floor mats made. Yeah. And then we just went with the original chrome gauges and chrome switches just to keep that era cool, you know. And the fluffy dice. Got to have the fluffy gotta dice. Got to have the fluffy mate. dice. Well, you guys would appreciate that. Oh, I love the fluffy dice. That's all about the fluffy dice. My first car had fluffy dice. I like it. Mate. And you know what? It was the most cheapest, most effective. Horsepower thing. added. Uh, like at least a hundred. Yeah, I agree. Down here with the tailwind. Yeah. So what sort of motor does this thing have? This has got a 16 litre Caterpillar twin turbo engine. A oh, twin turbo? Yeah. Oh. So it's running 685 horsepower. Wow. Yeah. And like 2,000, 1,800 foot pounds of torque? It'd be about 2,250 foot pounds of torque. It's got an 18 speed transmission in it. The unique thing about this truck is it's still got the American diff gear, so it's 3.36 oh, okay. diff ratio, right? and it's running on 24-inch tyres. So normally the Australian trucks all run 22-inch tyres. Uh, so this is the closest you'll get. To an American-style Peterbilt. It's, it's running to Nashville from Kentucky nice. in your Peterbilt. Nice. And, it, and it's quick. It'll do a, It'll sit on 165, no problems at all. 
Really? Not a problem in the world. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool there. Yeah. These things are pretty damn cool. But the stacks and everything. The, and obviously all the chrome, all the boxes are all custom made as well, are yeah. they? Yeah, we got them made. Like I said, we were in the midst of doing Dan's Peterbilt and then our Peterbilt vision sort of evolved and, and we sort of duplicated on Dan's truck. Did it evolve or did it become a battle? Oh, uh, it, it was never a battle. Oh, I don't know. It's because, the other. because it's, um, you know, we, we both we both have very similar tastes. And, yeah, okay. And, you know, it, it was about making these two trucks cool yeah. and making them stand out and making them timeless, you know? And you have done that because they, they both have their own character as well. Yeah. Like, they're, they're both Peterbilt's, they're both so similar grills and whatnot, but they, they do look like completely different trucks. Yeah. Yeah. And just, just from the styling that you guys have gone with. Yeah, yeah. No, it, 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 that's the beauty about what I do is, you know, the ability to do something so different and, and express yourself and have fun. And it is, it's just an, it's an extension of your character, isn't it, these things? 100%. Yeah. Well, mate, thank you so much for coming out. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. What about the black one? Oh, of course. It's the Western Star? Yep. Now, this is obviously another one that you've done. This was, this was clearly a full resto, right? Yeah, this, uh, this truck was in need of a lot of love. I bought it. It was really run down. Um, this truck won Rig of the Year in 1997, oh, which, okay. which was the biggest accolade that you could win. In so truck. was it was it restored before no, or after it, that? It was completely original. But oh, it, okay. Yeah, when I bought it, but it had been loved like a redheaded stepchild. Like it. Not bad. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, no, it, it was. It was probably the, one of the worst trucks I've ever, wow. I've ever had to do. What was so bad about it? Just the chassis was rusted. We had to replace the rail. Suspension was no good. Replace all the diffs. You know, pretty much all. So the chassis rusted out. Yep. That's a pretty thick yeah. piece of metal to rust out. So what happens is a lot of these big trucks have double chassis. And what happens is this was a cattle truck, so the cattle piss actually gets in between the rails of the chassis. Oh, and it doesn't destroy it. it. It rusts the chassis out. So that was our first big task was replacing the chassis rails. Never would have thought of that. Yeah, and then from there, like all the interior was completely kicked, so we had to um, basically reinvent the interior because no one makes the interior anymore. Yeah. Okay. So my interior guy, God bless him. So it's all custom interior? No, it's it's all it's fully brand new, but we put it back to 100% original. Wow. So so my custom interior guy went to the end of the earth to find yeah. the original to make material sure that it was matching. Yeah. To what we it we was. got the original Western Star dies made and everything just to make it perfect. We'll have a look in there in a second. Now, it is a bigger truck, right? It yeah. it it looks. Fucking sits way taller than yeah. the, than the Peterbilt. Yeah. Are they naturally just a bigger truck, or did you did you modify no, it to be taller? So these Western Stars are known as the 6900 series, which right. are the big off highway road train ah, style. Okay. So they're designed to go pull 200 ton out in the outback and and stay cool and just. 200 ton. Yep, 200 ton. So what sort of motor this thing have? It's got a um, a 16 litre Cummins in it, so a current model X15. Right. Yeah, so it, it runs, it's got a 750 horsepower program in it, uh, so it it runs some big horsepower. Yeah, okay. Yep. And Driver Dave drives this one for me. It's funny, it's, it's such a different concept to what Nico and I normally talk to. We, you know, we talk to guys and they, they've got 1,500 horsepower, this, this, yeah. this and that, yeah. but you know, they'll probably have 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. Yeah. But you got 600, 700 horsepower, you got well over 2,000. Two, yeah, 2,500 foot-pounds of torque. 2,500 this one. Yeah. So this thing's a monster. It, it's out of control. Does it haul us? Yeah. Like just normally, without without anything yeah. slapped on it? It does. But like you go put a hundred ton on this truck and you're going around trucks that are 50 and 60 tons. No, really? 100%. You know, it's it's got a pretty cool reputation in this truck. It's just an animal. And the gearbox, is it? this one had an 18 gear, the Peterbilt, yeah. you said. What's yeah. this one? This has got an 18 speed gearbox okay. in it as well. Yeah. Yep. And do you always have to, I've always wondered this, do you always have to go through every individual gear or can you go from, you know, first to fifth or some oh, other. No, you, you can just basically skip two or three gears every time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, there's no synchro that you need to stick with or anything. Can we have a quick look inside? 100%, yep. Oh, dude, that's so cool. Nico, do you want to have a quick chat to him and I'll yeah, jump up? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll swap. Nico, you take the... Uh... Nico doesn't have to do it now. <laughs> So while um, so while Chris is up there, yep. just sort of step us through any of the interior that's um, worthy of a mention, I guess. So what we did with this interior is we went basically right through a lot of the journals of the old Western Stars and picked out all the original pieces. My interior guy um, got the Western Star emblems remade, so we got the embossing machine. Yeah, that's cool. We actually went 
to Neil Walking in the States and actually found the original like Western Star Grey. How good's that? And we, we had to buy a minimum 100 metres of it, so now I've got enough Western Star Grey <laughs> to do another five trucks. Yeah. So anyone watching, you know where to go. Yeah, so yeah. But when you're doing a truck like this that is famous and does matter to you, like this is a very iconic truck for me. I first saw this as a kid at 17. Oh, wow. Like I skipped schoolies, went to Darwin in a truck. You yeah, know, wow. and then got to Darwin, the rig of the year ceremony was there, and this truck was there, yeah. and it was brand new, and I, I never thought I'd seen a big, such a big truck in all my life. Yeah, that's crazy. And then fast forward, you know, 25 years, and I own it, and we've, we've restored it back to this, which yeah, is Yeah, what a story. And so obviously this is something that you'll never pass on. No, and my youngest boy, he's mad with trucks. Each of my boys got a truck each, and this is Joshua's yeah. truck, so we restored oh, it to good. him. Yeah, and that's he's, nice. he's 11 years old. Yeah. Loves it. Doesn't know what he's in for then? Yeah. Oh, he, he knows exactly what he's in for. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. yeah, that's cool. And, Very um, cool. Yeah, so, and my boys will be here later, and they, they love the trucks and they love the industry. And Yeah, just another generation to come, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't know what they'll do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's good to showcase them what the trucking community can provide. And it's good for you guys to put on events like this too to, yeah, to of course. you know, to, to bring your community together with ours. Yeah, yeah. Different range of people and yep. everything, yeah. Yep. Swap over with Chris. Well, mate, it's such an awesome story behind these trucks and your history behind everything and TV shows. You've done well for yourself. It's awesome, dude. And it's such a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming down, too. No, it's pleasure. awesome. Hopefully, we have plenty more of these yep. and we'll see more of you. I'd love to. Yeah. Thanks.